this is Homie and the Dude, the Father and Son podcast, and today we're doing another D&D Diaries episode. Last week we talked about Battle Royale, and this time we're talking about um, a pirate ambush that I set up for my players, and how it was so restrictive, but yet wonderful at the same time. <laughs> um, so we're here, uh, as always, hoping that you guys come to learn a little bit about uh, DMing and come and uh, join us for these. Um, but basically, to get into it, we set up this awesome uh, pirate ambush for our players. So after they had uh, left the first island and encountered this battle royale dream that they had on their airship, um, they then, along their journey to the city, uh, were ambushed by sky pirates. I had, um, had a real like skirmish, not just a dream skirmish. Yeah, a real skirmish <laughs> with some, some actual sky pirates. So um, here's the map um, that we used uh, for our, our our combat on the day. It's a uh, it's a beautiful map. We've got two of our airships. So this is our player's airship called the Gladius. And then this is uh, another airship, uh, the pirate's airship called the Thunderbolt. Um, the Thunderbolt ha is led by Triple P, the, the, the pixie pirate captain. He has uh, Fury and uh, Lee, uh, or Kato, as we call him, uh, the monk pirate uh, on his team. Um, they basically came, boarded our player's ship in the night and began a battle uh, with them. Uh, they managed to actually knock the monk pirate Kato uh, off of the airship and they killed him. Um, which was... Which was Heartbreaking. Because, Which was heartbreaking. Because we loved Kato when we, when we created him. Yeah. We? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we had a really good time. The battle was really fun. Everyone did enjoy it. However, they fell victim to the pirates and the pirates captured them uh, and took them back to the pirate island. Now, here's the issue that went down. It was a really cool experience. Um, you know, everyone really enjoyed the combat. Um, there was some fun role play that happened. It was really like, uh, them killing Kato was a big moment for us because Kato was someone that we had really enjoyed making. He's yeah. this like mute monk that writes on a chalkboard, but also is a pirate and stuff. And we had one player that was a prisoner on the pirate ship. Yeah. That then that's kind of how the they joined they the joined crew. The, the bigger group. So that was so a big moment as well. There was lots of lots of cool aspects of it, but the problem was, guys, and the reason why this episode is pirate ambushing and bad dungeon mastering is. Um, I basically didn't have an out for the players. They were gonna get beaten by the pirate crew regardless of whatever creative solutions they kind of came up with or however they kind of dealt with it. And that was a big problem because as a DM, what I've learned and what I've gained, and then at this point, this was maybe our like fifth or fourth session of our homebrew world. And I'm beginning to hit my stride in some ways, but in other ways I'm not. And it, it was apparent to me after the session that they should have had an out. They should have had an option, an ability to survive this attack, ability to escape and be able to um, go forth and, and, and not have to deal with this, it, whether they could detach their ship and fly away or you know, uh, shut down the enemy ship or something. There should have been a way for them to escape this. But I made it so that the enemies were just very, uh, very strong, very powerful, that they were going to break down the players in like a few rounds of combat. And it was going to end with the players um, being captured, irregardless, because I wanted them to basically get a chance to meet one of the main antagonists in our world and uh, present them with the first kind of big option in the plot of whether they wanted to align themselves with the pirates in this world or whether they wanted to wanted to continue um, with the, the quest that they'd been given to go um, speak to some people in the city. So, yeah, it was something I definitely felt bad about. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the dirtier little secret. I felt like I was complicit in, in tightening this down mm. and making it because, I don't know if you remember, when we were designing this, this whole session, I was the one that was saying, we've got to knock the team out unconscious within I think I was saying like two rounds of combat or less, or maybe three rounds or less. So I, I had to even tighten it down even more because what I, what I was picturing is everyone needs to be knocked out so that they can then be taken onto the pirate ship, transported to the island, and, and then we could kind of evolve into the next part of the story, which was really cool as well. But if anything went awry with that and we had... So let's say, because you're, you're, the guys were so par powerful, the pirate team was so powerful that if it went beyond two or three rounds, we could actually kill some of the players. So we were yeah. really like trying to orchestrate stuff and try to tweak it and try to really make it so that it, it 
turned out perfectly. And in doing that, there we, literally is no room for creativity at all. In, in that, we took away the one rule of Dungeons & Dragons, which is, you know, your players need to be the ones building the plot and telling the story, and that the Dungeon Master, though I am a player at the table, I'm also a vessel for this plot. I'm the game, I am the world, I am the, the thing around you guys. I'm not the, the players going through and affecting what's happening in this world. You, the, the, the team were, and I, I, we made that mistake massively. And I think, uh, again, it felt like we fell back into that railroading trap, but I wouldn't even call this railroading. I would call this worse than railroading. Oh, this, yeah. was, this was a, a place where there was no other decisions, though they felt like they did, and don't get me wrong, the players enjoyed the ambush and they, they felt like they had options, but they, they did not. And I think that's, the big issue that I that I had with myself DMing at that point. Now, I have learned massively from that. We run a much more open sandbox world at this point, mm. um, which is something that I'm much more enjoying as a dungeon master. It's allowed me to flourish and, and, and do things very differently. But man, can I, can I tell you guys that you always need to have an out for your players. No matter what, this, if you wanna get them captured or you wanna do this or that, there still needs to be a chance. There needs to be a couple of options, one or two options. And even some options that you haven't thought of that you are okay with letting happen. Because that's the other thing is I knew that if they came up with something creative, it was gonna be hard for me to allow that to happen as a DM uh, in my mindset at that time. Now I see that you know if they had done something creative, I should have just let it happen. They should have escaped. They should have, you know, re-encountered these pirates at a later time, and we should have saved this encounter for another time. Yeah. But the issue being was, if we didn't run this encounter, we didn't have a city for them to go to. There was nothing following this, so it would have been a completely improvised session. Not that I don't mind that, but no, as, yeah. as we've so heard, um, you know, there's two types of DMs. There's pantsers and planners. Panthers run things by the seat of their pants and planners plan a lot of stuff. I'm somewhere in the middle in of that I like to plan a decent amount, but I'm happy to improvise at this point. I was not so happy to improvise a whole city or, or a whole nother island or anything at that point. So um, I, I didn't. And it turns out that one of our favorite NPCs, the monk, who we, we desperately would have loved to have him proceed, in the end, in retrospect, it was actually probably good that he fell off, that he was, he was killed off the ship because at least the players did have It felt like a moment of, of like, oh, victory. Yeah, yeah, we, oh, okay, we might be able to turn the tides. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, I fully agree with you. But yeah, it was, um, it was an interesting situation, one that we definitely look back upon um, unfavorably, but I think we both agree that going forward, you know, it's something we learned massively from. So if I could say anything and give advice, it would be, Always make sure there's options. There's got to be ways out of even the stickiest of situations, um, as we see from Hollywood movies and things like that. You know, um, I would say you know, obviously, base it in reality, grounded in the rules of your your world, your lore, five E rules. You know, that kind of stuff. Make sure it's grounded within that. But yes, allow there has to be options for the players, and um, we fell victim to this extreme case of railroading, and it ended up leading to something good, but it was, a, it was only by chance that this worked out for us. Yeah, and I would say, like, to be more specific, in leaving an out for your players, don't super, like, uh, magnify or multiply the power of your NPCs so they are unbeatable, which our NPCs in that encounter were and, unbeatable. Well, here's the thing. I would say that there is some in NPCs that they are gonna encounter, such as, you know, um, the big bad guy or, you know, the, the uh, one of the main antagonists, people like that. There are powerful people in the world, especially when you're level one, two, three, four, you know, five, you're, you're a bit squishy, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're meant to be able to be beaten. And I think, you know, you shouldn't be able to compete with certain level, but, the, the difference was with good strategic planning from the players, with good creative thinking, and with good use of uh, their abilities, plus the luck of the dice, they should have an out. They That's should. what it should be. Yeah. It's, you know, it should be that when it comes down to it, if the, if the dice fall in the right place and they're smart about how they play, if they're you know, using cover right, if they're yeah. noticing people's weaknesses and exploiting them and things like that, then there should be an out. But uh, I, I do agree that... Uh, I mean, we had like, we had, if you looked at the stat blocks of the NPCs, plus we had a couple other things in our hip pocket, even if that got like a little bit mm. 
un, you know, a little bit questionable if they were going to get close to winning, we could pull out some other stuff. So, like, we literally had staged it. Like, there's just no possible way. There's no, no matter what they rolled, it just wasn't going to happen for them, and that was the problem. Yeah, that was the issue. And uh, so, yeah, guys, if anything, let your dice tell the story. Let your players tell the story, and just be a vehicle for creativity. And something that we learned and someone, something that someone taught us is if your players don't go to an encounter that you have written, don't be like, ah, oh, fuck, pocket it, use it at a later time, pull it out at a later time. It will save you prep somewhere else down the line. Don't feel like it's wasted. Know that you can use it at another juncture in your plot, at another juncture in this, this adventure. Even if you have to tweak things or whatever, um, it's not wasted. So don't feel bad if your players don't go somewhere that you've written uh, and they end up going, you know, to somewhere you've not even begun to create. Um, be bold. Be willing to, to just go with the flow and go with the improvisation, unlike I was able to do at that time. Uh, I've gotten better at it, but yeah, that's what I'd say. Yeah, and it's, um, and we, we keep talking about this, but it's all about finding, discovering moments that were not planned that are the best moments, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and in order to do that, you have to kind of be comfortable with being vulnerable as a DM, and that's hard to do, yeah. but that's where the magic is mostly. I think what I'm starting to learn about this series as we make it is, this series is more about you looking at yourself as a DM, being self-analytical and analyzing what you do as a dungeon master so that you can be the best version of you possible for your team, your players, um, your stream, uh, w your supplements, whatever it is you're doing, you you can come at it from a good angle. And so we hope that this has given you some insight today. Um, next time we're going to be talking about as our players have been captured, they get taken to the secret pirate island of Kaizoku where they meet our first antagonist, the Pirate King Zodiac. So we'll get into that next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Homie and the Dude, Father and Son Podcast, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. We're chugging through. We're loving doing this stuff for you guys. Um, if you want to support us, if you want to make sure that we can keep getting, you know, better quality set, better quality lights, make the filming better. Bigger, um, bigger batteries for the camera. Bigger batteries for the camera. <laughs> yes! <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can do that by just liking, following the page, and subscribing to the YouTube channel. That is what really makes a difference to us.